There is more to this life. There's more inside of you. You're searching for purpose, to make a difference that lasts. We believe that God put that desire in your heart for a reason, for you to become an exceptional leader in this generation, to build the church, to reach the world. At Highlands College, innovative classes shape the intellect to influence a complex world, while hands-on ministry training develops the skills and confidence to make an eternal impact. Life on campus is an experience unlike any other, with a vibrant, supportive community that grows your faith and builds your character to lead. We will champion your destiny and personally connect you to ministry roles within a global network of churches and ministries. You can join the lifelong family of graduates reaching communities around the world with the hope of Jesus. We have built a place for you and your future. Join us and experience the more you were created for. Hi, good morning guys. It's so weird seeing that video because it's like I know like half the people that are in that video and it's like it's just funny to see them in that video but anyways. Um, hey guys, my name is Desi. Um, I am currently on uh, staff here um, at the church and uh, I always say this every week. Uh, first and foremost, I want to tell everyone here, welcome. You know, for if you're first time coming here or if you're joining us for the first time online, you know, this is a place for you guys. And I, you know, I make sure I say that every week because I feel like that's a really important thing for you guys to know that this is truly a place for you guys and hopefully a place that you guys can eventually call your home and us your family. And we're just, once again, the, the weird cousins that annoy you and maybe give you some good advice sometimes. Um, so I have the opportunity to uh, speak today and this is an enormous you know, honor. And so uh, first and foremost, I wanna thank the pastors and just the leaders of this house uh, for uh, giving me the opportunity and trusting me enough to be in front of this congregation. And um, I don't take that lightly, so if you guys can, put your hands together for our pastors. <laughs> so as you guys saw in that video, um, I am currently a student at Highlands College. And uh, Highlands College is basically just a ministry school where they teach young people and really people of all ages um, how to do this thing called a vocational ministry. And, you know, everyone's supposed to do ministry, but a vocational ministry is just making this Sunday happen and everything that involves, like, this church, you know, that's, that's what I'm learning how to do. And my major is the pastoral major, and so that I'm basically learning how to pastor people and how, you know, preaching is one of them. And uh, I, I do that because I truly feel like this is something that God has called me to do. And I've, I've grown up in the church. Both my parents are missionaries, and I grew up on the mission field. So I kind of, I, I grew up around church and seeing people's lives be changed. And I just, I really couldn't understand it. Like, usually people ha go and have a process of going from good person, I mean, bad person to good person. And it's, it, usually they, they come in the church, you know, they may, might be smelly, a little their hair's nappy or something, and come in pajamas. It's like, that's how they come in, and they're kind of rude, but then in, in one, like in a second, and in, in a minute, that they come the next week, and they're just totally different. And naturally, I can't explain why that is. I can't explain why people just become different, and that they, why they're able to transform. I couldn't explain that naturally, and I talked to the youth about this, um, a couple weeks ago, there were things that I just grew up in that I just, I couldn't explain it. There were miracles that took place in my life that I didn't understand, and since I couldn't explain it naturally, the only logical solution is that there's a supernatural, and that there's something supernatural that played a role in the lives of people who, whose lives were transformed, and even mine. And so, I'm like, if there's something supernatural, if that truly does exist, I wanna be a part of it. You know, I wanna be a part of this process, and so that's tr truly why I, I wanted to um, go to Highlands College, why I interned in the first place at this church, and how I eventually got on staff, you know, like that, this is something I feel called to do. And um, the church is currently sponsoring me to go to the church, uh, I mean, to go to Highlands College, and um, they've been very vocal about, you know, what it is that we're supposed to do, and so um, they, they sponsor me in going, and um, in return for their service in my life, 
um, I kind of return uh, that service for an extra three years after I graduate from Highlands College. And so um, this is just a huge opportunity. Just, you know, I thank the pastors all, all the time for that. And so the, the series that we're in is called Finding Mental Health with Jesus. And I don't know about you guys. I know there was times in my life that I have experienced mental, mental unhealth or uh, unhealthiness, you know, and where I felt unhealthy in my uh, mental health, my spiritual health, my emotional health. And I just was a really unhealthy person. You know, I, even though I'm only 20 years old, you know, I, I have experienced a whole pandemic or I've experienced uh, going on Zoom, being disconnected from people. You know, there's just things in my life that I've experienced that have caused me to be like just an unhealthy person. And one thing that helped me go from unhealthy person to now someone who's active in my faith was the church. And so kind of, once I heard this uh, series and, you know, I was asked to preach, I, I'm like, okay, I, I know I have to mention this. I have to talk about the church and what the church's role is in our lives that, and what they can do uh, and what they've done for me to help me go from unhealthy person to healthy. And so I've titled this the sermon, Why Church? You know, why come to church on a Sunday? Uh, why uh, come to Grace Walk? Well, what's the whole point? Why is it important to even be in this building that we call church? You know, why? And so that's a question I hope to answer by the end of this message. And um, yeah, something I want to talk about. So if you guys can, please bow your heads. Uh, so God, we, we come to you today. We thank you for everything that you've given us and provided for us. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together in a congregation of people who love God just like us and to learn about you. We ask that anything that I, I say today is, is, is of you. And if it's not, to have it fall on deaf ears but that if it is of you, have it, have it to be received by an open and gentle heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So once again, we're trying to answer that question. And so uh, just to go off the first verse, Psalm 92, 13 says, Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And so right off the bat, right off the bat we have this word planted. And so it, it kind of speaks to the type of relationship that we are to have with the house of the Lord, with the church. And so me as someone that just, you know, comes week to week, I come here, I leave, I come and I leave. That's not the type of relationship that this verse is talking about. We're talking about something that is planted. When that is here, that is rooted in the house of the Lord, that is watered and that ultimately is able to grow. And so we have this idea of, of us being planted in the house of the Lord and it says that um, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Now, our goal as a church is ultimately to get you guys to a point of flourishing. You know, we want that for you guys. You know, we, we flourish, and so we want you guys to flourish as well. And the way to do that, according to this verse, is to be planted first. And so just to kind of illustrate this, um, there's, I have this picture. I know a lot of you guys, this might look like your backyard. And uh, this actually is not, you know, if you're wondering why your house is literally on the screen right now, you know, it's, this is actually not uh, Arizona. Uh, this is uh, a, a place in California called Death Valley. And so Death Valley is l literally just the hottest, driest place in America. And it's, it's just hot, super hot, super dry there. And I know you Arizonians might not know this, but in order for things to grow, it needs water. And so it needs some type of moisture for it to, uh, to grow. And so that's just not something that uh, Death Valley has. And so they call it Death Valley because nothing ever, no life is there. Nothing grows. Uh, it's just dead. So a phenomenon actually happened in the winter of 2004 where seven inches of rain uh, poured out into Death Valley. And so Nothing initially happened, not, not, nothing really uh, happened until the following spring in 2005 where this happened. So this is called a super bloom. This is, once again, it's a, it's a phenomenon, but what this kind of shows is that Death Valley wasn't necessarily dead, it was just dormant. And so this uh, Death Valley, it's, there were seeds that were there under the dirt, under the mud, under that, you know, uh, ugly covering, there was seeds underneath it. And 
And I think that in the same way that each and every one of you, 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 though you may think that you're in a desert, you have seeds in you, thousands of seeds that if put in the right environment, they can grow. And so, and so the, the question really is how? You know, how do we do that? You know, and I know a lot of people you know, feel like they're in a, in a desert in some type of drought where they, have, they don't have life or they haven't had water and they haven't been able to produce life that ultimately creates beauty. You know, they, they haven't had that in their life. The last good thing that happened to them was like six years ago, maybe they got a promotion and then they, they lost that job five years ago. So it's like, you know, nothing good has happened. And I feel like I'm in this, this desert, this, this dryness. And I, we want to let you know that we believe each and every one of you has a, a, a seed of potential. And so once again, the question is how though? How do, we, how do you get from desert to super bloom? What is it that the church can do to help you guys go from this environment to this environment so that way you can be able to see life uh, in your life? And so there's something that we call the spiritual journey. And in this spiritual journey, there are four major steps that we can take in order to change our environment. And so these four steps are based off of this verse, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18, which says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. And all, all that to say, I wish you guys could see this. And so this is Paul writing a letter to a church in Ephesus, and that's why it's called Ephesians. And so this is Paul talking to them. He's like, guys, I wish you could see this. Then he goes on to list the four things that they wish they would see, so that you may know God better. And I know to us, that seems like something that is, you know, pretty common, whether you have like a Catholic background or Pentecostal background or whatever. It's like, yeah, we, we, we can know, we can know about God. Like, we understand that. But uh, people back then just thought that was totally crazy. They, they didn't know that that was even a possibility because last time they checked, God was here in heaven and we're here on earth. And, you know, the only way for us to have some type of relationship is for me to have a sacrifice or if I go into his presence, I'm getting totally destroyed and melted. Like, they just didn't believe that that was something that was possible. So when Paul said this, this was just totally crazy to them, totally rocked their world. And so that word, know him, actually um, comes from a Greek word called gnosko. And so this Greek word gnosko means to know or to come to know or to, to feel. And so it's a very intimate term. And it's used to also refer to how a man knows his wife and how they come together to make a baby. And so it's not like a sexual term or anything like that. It's just a term that's used for intimacy. And in the same way that a husband and a wife come together to, to make something, it's the same way that we have such an intimate relationship with Christ where something can now come from that. And so this speaks to an intimate relationship with God. And once again, that's just a totally foreign idea that they could have that relationship with God. So if there's anything that you take you know, today is that God wants a relationship with you. And it, it was funny because in preparation for this message, there were a whole bunch of you know, older people that told me, they're like, make sure that, you know, so, like if you're on stage, make sure you're just preaching the gospel. And, and, the, and I'm like, that's totally true. So if, if there's anything you guys take from this message, know that it's Jesus wants a relationship with you. And not just any relationship, but he wants a gnosko relationship with you. One that is intimate and one that can have something produced from it. And so it's less about a religion and more about a relationship. And so if that's all you take. And so um, to go on, it says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. And so obviously none, none of us have eyes on our heart, you know, but we have eyes that are directly connected to our heart. <clears throat> and since it's connected to our heart, however, like we could all see the same thing, but the way that we perceive that information can be different regarding whatever our heart condition is. 
So if I look, like, see a situation where I see people from a broken heart, maybe someone turn their back on me, now I, the way I see a person is going to be different. Like, can I trust them? Are they going to abandon me just like you know, the last person did? Like, it's how we see something is determined based off of our, our past, our problems, the, the people in our life, and, you know, just, just our issues. And so, however our heart, whatever our heart condition is, that the way that they, it, it's dealt with all, the, all those things determines how we're going to see an opportunity that we get or a person that comes into our life. It's just, they're very heavily in, uh, connected with each other. <clears throat> And that's what Paul is talking about in this verse. He wishes that our eyes, uh, the eyes of our heart will be enlightened. And that once God knows us, once we have an intimate relationship with us, or once we have an intimate relationship with God, that he has access to us so he can begin to change us and begin to clean off those lenses of our, of our eyes. And so just to move on, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. And so basically, once you settle your past, you can now see your future. So we know God, God begins to work on us, and now that he act, has access to us, fixing all the problems in our past, now we are no longer bound by those things, now we can look to the future. And now we can see what things that God wants us to do, because ultimately we're all supposed to glorify God in some way. In some way, shape, or form, God created humans to glorify him and to be a representation of his power and his goodness and his love and his grace. And each of us are going to do that in different ways. We're going to glorify God. I'm doing it on a stage, and other people are going to do it um, outside evangelizing to someone um, across the street, you know, a homeless person or something. Like, the way that we do it is just going to look different from person to person. And we want to help you guys discover what it is that you're calling is, just like this verse is saying, hope in which he has called you. So God has called you each to do something specific in order to glorify him. And we want to help you identify what exactly that is so that way you can begin to live in that calling. And so hope is not found in the fixing of our problems, but in the discovery of our purpose. And so we want to help you discover that purpose before you can now live in hope. Because if you're searching for hope, it's going to be found in your calling. So we want you to uh, find your calling so that way you can begin to live in this uh, hope that God is talking about. And people always like tell me, they're like, well, Desi, come on. Not, not all of us have issues. Like, be, be more positive, you know? Like, we're not always going to face problems. And I'm like, okay, I'm positive that you're going to face issues, okay? I'm, I'm positive that you're going to have problems. And, you know, if you don't think you have issues, that's your issue. I'm sorry. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So, um, so just to move on, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. So God has an inheritance for all of you. And that's not necessarily money. That's not like some, you know, inheritance that um, he's referring to, but it's inheritance in his holy people. So it's having a stake in someone, in the changing of someone else's life. And I've mentioned this before, but it's, it's having, um, so once you have a stake in someone's life change, it's infinitely more important than anything you will ever do. Because once you play a role in someone's life and for, for them coming to God for the first time, that's securing their, their, their life for all eternity. Once they know God, they're, they're, they're saved and their, their eternity is now secured with God. And for you to be a part of that, you're, you're part of their eternal salvation. So that's why I say it's eternally more important than anything you could ever do. And so that's the hope that God is referring to. And so it, 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 it kind of tells us that this is an inheritance that we just gain by ourselves, but it's one that we gain when we're a part of a family, when we're a part of a community that we are impacting. And so... That, that's why it's not necessarily regarding money, because people have money, but they, they're, they're still not fulfilled, or they have success, and they're like, you know, this is empty. And I remember watching this, <clears throat> this interview uh, with Tom Brady, who is, I think, the greatest, you know, football player ever. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. 
But yeah, he's just, he's the greatest. The guy has multiple rings. And it's literally after he won the Super Bowl, he, he's like, I hope this isn't it. I hope that everything I, I've worked on since I was a kid, since I was you know, 12 years old or whatever, everything that I've worked on since I was a kid, like I hope this isn't it. Because if this is it, then this is not it, <laughs> you know? Like, I, I hope that this isn't all that our, our life has come to. And it's, he didn't have that fulfillment. And that's a fulfillment that we want you guys to have. We don't want you guys to get all the money in the world or something or uh, have all this success and still have that emptiness, still just sitting there. Because there is an inheritance that God has for you that he says that he wants for you that is only found in a community of people that you're personally impacting. And so uh, Psalm 2, 8 says, Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possessions. And so this verse doesn't necessarily mean kids as an inheritance. You're not going to have like a whole, bunch of, a whole bunch of kids. But once again, it's referring to you having a stake in someone else's life being changed. And so I've mentioned before, we have a very close relationship with Highlands College and uh, even Church of the Highlands, which is the church side of Highlands College. And so in that close relationship, uh, they also use the spiritual journey. And that's something that we've adopted. We adopt a lot of their you know, strategies, systems, so that way it could help us uh, do a Sunday or do church uh, better. And so how they would display this, the spiritual journey is know God, we want you guys to find freedom, we want you to discover purpose, and make a difference. And so that's something we want for you guys. We want you guys to know God, we want you guys to find freedom, and discover your purpose so that way you can make a difference. And so I'm going to go through them all one more time, and uh, just to give you some more, a little bit more scripture, and to show you what exactly our church provides in order for you guys to continue on this journey and uh, fulfill those things. So number one, no God. First Timothy 6.21, it says, Some of these people have missed the most important thing in life. They don't know God. And I include this verse in here just to place that much more emphasis on knowing God. And I've told you if there's anything that you leave with is that you can know God because this is what secures your eternity is having a relationship with God, a gnosko relationship with God. And so Matthew 7, 21 through 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoer. And so this verse, you see it again, I never knew you. This is the same gnosko word that we see in the other verse. So we can do things for God. We can prophesy in his name, cast out demons. We could do things for God, but it's all empty if we don't know him. And it says here that if you don't have that gnosko relationship, you don't have that intimate relationship with God, he, he's like, okay, well, by all means, you don't have to. You, you, he wants a relationship with us, and if we don't want it, then he won't force it on you. He's a loving God that is gracious, and he's not going to force something onto you. And so if you don't want that gnosko relationship with him, he will allow you to spend it for all eternity away from him. And so, once again, if you, this is, refers to the gnosko relationship, and I've mentioned before that everything we do here on a Sunday is for you guys, and it's to kind of help you guys accomplish this first step, which is know God, which is why we help people know God through church services. And so I, I place emphasis on knowing God, but now I want to give you a step on what the church provides in order for you to now accomplish this thing called knowing God. And so uh, it's through church services that we that these sermons that we provide, and even through the people that hold the doors for you and help you in through your parking, it's like they're showing the character of Christ. And so you're knowing more about God by just seeing 
the character in the people that serve and even when the people that are preaching on stage, like you, you can learn about God. And so step two, find freedom. And so once again, we, we know God uh, and now he begins to move things around us, cleaning the lenses of our heart. And, you know, a lot of people um, believe that when we have these issues that are really binding us and holding us back, uh, that really, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to pray about it. And I'm going to go pray and, you know, ask God for forgiveness. And that's, that's important. That's good. Um, that's part of the journey. Uh, but there's still more that you can do. And so James 5.16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that way you may be healed. And so how I would put it is we go to God for forgiveness, but we go to people for healing. And so most importantly, we go to God, we, we ask for forgiveness, we confess our sins to him, and that's the number one thing you need to do. But in order to truly be free from the things uh, that you've been dealing with, your problems, issues, you need to say it to someone else. You need to confess to someone else. And it's like us wanting to go to the gym. I mean, it's, it could happen for maybe a week, but I mean, it's not probably going to happen uh, for the second week or the third week, you know, because there's no one there helping us. But if there was a person waiting there at the gym, you know, calling us saying, hey, are you going to be there? You know, are, are, are you going to uh, wake up on time? Are you going to be at the gym? Are we going to work out? Kind of keeping you accountable. And it makes it easier for you to continue on this process of getting better because people are involved. And so I, uh, according to this verse, like, yes, we need to ask God for forgiveness. But in order to truly be healed, uh, we need people. And so God designed us to have life change in the context of relationships. So when you think about it, okay, if we need to confess our sins and our problems to people, then the only reason why you're going to do that, the only way you're going to do that is if you feel comfortable with that person and if you have a, a relationship with them. I mean, you're not just going to do it to some stranger, but if it's someone you have a relationship with, then you're probably going to uh, share your, your stuff with them. And so we have things called small groups, and so we, we help people find freedom through small groups, and we, we believe that small groups are where people can now begin to create that relationship. And so whether people are gathering for a Bible study or whether they're gathering for a book study or if they're just gathering for pickleball, you know, like if they're gathering for these things, they're gathering together to create that relationship with each other so that way they can eventually begin to be like, okay, look, take off my mask, here, here are the things that I'm really dealing with, here are the things I'm really addicted to, and the things I'm really struggling with, you know, and that's when we begin to have healing in our lives. And so uh, some small groups that the church provides is uh, we have a pickleball group on, on, on Saturdays and on uh, uh, Mondays, yeah, and so we have some for the women's ministry, uh, men's ministry, uh, for CR, and really, CR has groups for, for people where they can, once again, it creates an opportunity for, you know, men, and men w with men, women with women, and, you know, it helps people create a relationship with each other so they be able to uh, talk with each other about it. And um, even men's ministry as well, they have groups on Tuesdays. And so there are really opportunities for you guys to get involved in a small group here at the church. Um, you just, you know, if you guys want that information then just get in contact with women's ministry, men's ministry, CR, and we can begin to kind of work that out. So number three, <clears throat> discover purpose. And so uh, Ephesians 1.17, it goes back to that verse, um, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. And so there's this quote, I can't read it from back there, so I'm going to read it right um, by Mark Twain that says, the two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. And so, yes, you're born, you're here on this earth, great opportunity, right? You're alive. And now the next step is for you to discover why exactly you're here. And once you discover why you're here, you can begin to live, just like this verse says, in that hope uh, for um, a new and better future. And so Psalm 139 uh, 16 says, your eyes saw my unformed body all the days ordained for me 
were written in your book before one of them came to be. And I include this verse in there because God knitted you together in your mother's womb. And so when he was trying to see what color eye uh, that you're going to have, what color hair you're going to have, what, what's your skin tone looking like, you know, while he was deciding those things, he, des he designed you for significance, for purpose. And each and every one of you have a calling that, that God has uniquely put within you. And we want to help you discover that. And the way we, we do is we help people discover purpose through growth track. And so growth track is basically a four-step um, session that we have every Sunday, um, like every other month, where we basically tell you about the history of the church first, but then we uh, kind of take a personality test. We can see how exactly God designed you, so that way we could discover uh, what your purpose is, what gifts you have, and yeah, just to figure out who you are so we can better see how, what you can do, what ministry that you'll make the most difference. And yeah, just discover God's purpose for your life. So last one, make a difference. And so we know God. We have this relationship with him. He begins to change things within us. We find freedom. And then we uh, begin to discover our purpose. Okay, now that I'm free from my past, I can now look towards my future. And now that I look, can look towards my future, I'm now able to start making a difference. So 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, all of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. So I want to let you guys know that you are part of the body of Christ, whether you, you've made that first step or not, whether, whether you, you just don't even know about God, you are part of this body. And if you are not here with us, and if you're not a part of this body, we're, there's a part of us that's missing. And we, we can't do what we do be, like good without you. We can't do it better uh, without you. And I want you to know that because there's sometimes we might think that there's not a, an importance in what it is that we're supposed to do, why we're on this earth. But I want to let you know that, that there is and that God ha has already uh, ordained something for you. Amen. And so John 15, 8 and 11 says, this is to be my father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So just in the beginning of that verse, we see the relationship between bearing fruit and being a disciple. And so if you're bearing fruit, you are a disciple of God. And if you're not bearing fruit, you're not a disciple of God. And so if you're calling yourself a disciple, a follower of God, someone who is a Christian, then you will be bearing fruit. And bearing fruit here says showing yourselves to be my disciples. So it has to be shown to other people. Other people have to be able to identify the fruit in your life because if they can't, then you're not a disciple. So if you're a disciple, you're going to be ha emulating that love, that joy, that peace to other people and they, them identifying that and them being changed because of it. So right off the, right off the bat, we see the importance of uh, bearing fruit and that if you're a disciple of God, you have to be taking part in someone else's life change by showing them that fruit. And so, to continue on, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. And so, notice how it's not like, be a disciple so that way Grace Walk can have more volunteers or something. That's not at all what it's saying. It's saying that in order for you guys to be disciples, or when you guys become disciples, that is when you guys obtain this joy that it's talking about. Joy that may be complete. And so, once again, we want you guys to, be, to flourish. We want you guys to have joy. And in order to do that, you guys got to be disciples that are producing fruit and being a part of someone's life that is ultimately changing. And so, and we call the, the people that are, like, holding the doors or people that are in the coffee cart or in the parking, we call them all dream teamers. And, and the reason why we call that is just because, I mean, they're the dream team. I mean, they're... they're, they're the ones who are making this possible. And so, could we give a hand for the Dream Teamers? I mean. <clears throat> and, you'll, and you'll even see, if you talk to any of the Dream Teamers, you'll, you'll see this joy that it's talking about. You'll see this, that, that now that they're part of something that's much bigger than themselves, that they have a, 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 a different type of joy. They, 
they don't have happy, happiness necessarily. Happiness is external, but joy is internal. And so you, get, you begin to see happiness only because there's joy that's going on the inside. And so 1 Peter 4, 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So we help people use their gifts to make a difference on the dream team. And that's, that's what I just talked about. You know, we want you guys to be a part of this family ultimately so that you can have this hope that God talks about, this joy that God talks about. You know, in order for you guys to start being active people in the faith, we, we understand that this, 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 you know, is a part of that journey, that being part of the dream team, identifying what it is you're supposed to do in your, with your life, and then actually doing it. You know, that's how you obtain this fulfillment. And so we want this for you guys more than anything. So the question, why church? And I hope that's something that you guys have been able to identify. Why, why church? Because we want you guys to, uh, to um, know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. You know, that's ultimately what we want for you guys. And we, in the goal of this, this, this journey, this spiritual journey, is for you guys to go from someone who might not know God to someone that knows God and that is actively serving in, in your faith and in your walk with God. So that's what we want for you guys. So if you guys can, please bow your heads. So some of you here might have never known that knowing God is a real possibility and that you want to take this, this journey, take, start, begin taking this, this step, but it starts at step one, which is knowing God, and, and some of you might not know God. And the reality is some of us might not have ever heard that message that, we, that there is a God that loves me and that cares for me, and I'm here to tell you that there is that there is a man named Jesus that died on the cross for your sins so that way you can be made worthy. And so that way you can have a relationship, a gnosko relationship with God. And if you've never been able to make that commitment, just raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Wow. All right. Uh, go ahead and lower your hands. So for everyone that raised their hands, and really, church, let's all do it together so that way we can support the people that did raise their hands. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing life without you. I'm sorry for not seeking you in the places that I'm, I know I'm supposed to. But I'm done now. Say it one more time. I'm done now. I'm ready to live a life that is with you. And I want you not just to be part of my life, but I want you to be all of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.